What is good, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here coming at y'all with another two minute drill episode. Wednesday, July 7th, man. And y'all know we got to go down to the swag. Talk about Deion Sanders continuing to set the bar recruiting. But first, just a few updates, man. Make sure to go check out our recent interview with some Alabama AM transfers. Um, we got Jonathan Timmons, offensive lineman transfer, and Spencer Perry, Alabama AM defensive back transfer. We also have Mark Evans, the second Arkansas Pine Bluff offensive lineman. He has three times been first team SWAC All American at offensive line. Make sure to Make sure to check that out. Excuse me. Make sure to check that out. And I can't wait to have them all, man. That'll be dropping Thursday morning, 7 a.m. right here on our YouTube channel, as always, with our with our interviews. And man, we got we got some big ones coming. You know, I was gonna announce it on Twitter today anyway. So let me go ahead and pull it up real quick. We will have Christopher Edmonds, Sanford defensive back. He was first team FCS All-American. For the spring season, and he is a preseason first team All American at the safety spot for the Sanford Bulldogs and um, the FCS. So make sure to check that out Friday morning, 7 a.m., right here on YouTube, too. And we got so many interviews lined up. And listen, I got I got them all to announce next week, too. We have so many players lined up to come on here. We're going to expose y'all, man. This is the only channel, guys. Let me talk my ish real quick. The only channel where you can see Power 5, FCS, HBCU. Yeah, we cover it all, man. Group of five. It don't matter. We cover all the football right here only on the Blue Bloods. So make sure to subscribe now, man. We appreciate y'all for all the support you already give us. But let's get into the topic today, man. Jackson State sets another school record. Um, Quadarius Davis, man, he is the new highest rated commit in Jackson State history. I think Deion's broken it three or four times now um, since he's been the coach for uh, Jackson State. I mean, this kid's out of Skyline High School down in Dallas, Texas. He was the number 141 player in the 2021 recruiting class. He was committed to Kansas. He got dropped from his in, uh, um, his national letter of intent that he signed due to some off the field things. Don't really love to talk about stuff like that, but he's headed to Jackson State. He is going to be part of a wide receiving core that is going to be. Let me say this, guys: they're going to be very, very talented on paper, but it's going to be a receiving core that's going to have to gel. Going to have to get some chemistry built up with Shadur in the back in the backfield. I, there's a lot of unknowns about this recruiting class. Their leading wide receiver, Dalen Baldwin. Headed off to Michigan, but you got guys like Shane Hooks, Corbin's back there. You got Josh Lanier. Now you have Davis. You have a lot of people with that are really, really nice on paper, but they haven't necessarily done it in the swag at Jackson State. And Davis, man, I mean, let me go down here to his stats, man. I mean, this this kid did pretty well in high school. I mean, 1,900 receiving yards, over 100 catches, 23 touchdowns over three years. I mean, his production is a little bit below what you see out of a lot of receivers coming out of the Texas area due to the wide amount of spread attacks, pass-heavy offenses in Texas high school. But this kid still showed out. He was being recruited by the best of the best. I mean, Three straight playoff appearances in Texas 6A um, football. And, I mean, when I look at him, this kid is very, very talented. And uh, I was kind of reading some scouting reports and reports just about what he was like on the high school recruiting circuit. And they just said that his intensity, his play speed, and his effort are three of the biggest things that really stand out for him. So, yes, you got the Josh Lanier burner. you got the Shane Hooks route running. I mean, you, you can go even to the Corbin route running. This kid's going to be kind of like that bulldog wide receiver where if you need a one-on-one -on -one catch, you're going to get it with this kid. I don't think he's going to blow you away with his speed or necessarily his route running, but he has college-ready size. His body awareness is up there, and he is just going to outman you. And he's going to be more aggressive getting to the ball than you. And those are some of the things that really stuck out on the 707 circuit that I was reading about. A lot of scouts loved his intensity, and they graded it one of the best in the class. It was just that, you know, he doesn't have 
he doesn't have really he doesn't have perfect route running, but it's something that can be improved upon. And I think being with a coach like Deion Sanders is going to do wonders for him. And when he was asked by 247 Sports about his decision, he said, quote, the coaching staff, all the people around it, there's a lot to it that makes me want to go to Jackson State. There's a lot to it. Um, he said that playing for Sanders is going to be a great opportunity. He's a Hall of Famer, and not too many people get a chance to play under a Hall of Famer. He's going to teach me a lot. I have a lot to learn. There's going to be a lot to it. He feels like he can still learn from Dion, even though he played defensive back. And he said that they're trying to build something big. Um, they're trying to do something no one's ever done, you know. And he will be eligible this fall, guys. So this kid is going to suit up when Jackson State plays FAMU to open up the season uh, down there in South Florida. I'm, I'm very excited for this kid. I think he has a lot of potential. I don't know. So if I'm looking at the depth chart right now, really and truly for Jackson State, I don't think he's going to be number one or number two, but I think he's going to fall somewhere in that three to four range, to be honest. It really just depends because all these other guys have a huge head start on him by learning the system, going up against those defensive backs of Jackson State that are so talented. They got a leg up on the playbook, chemistry with Shadur, and understanding everything that comes with this offense. And, you know, I've talked about it. I know I got uh, Scotty and all scripts talked about it. They're going to still have to run the ball. And I think he, uh, when I tagged him on Twitter when this happened, he said there's only one ball. And that's true. And, you know, they're probably going to run a lot of four or five wide receiver sets, but you still are going to have to predicate this offense on establishing the run. When you looked at what they struggled with last year, it's that Quincy Casey and Jalen Jones – Everything was on them. I mean, Jalen Jones, when he was the quarterback, say what you will about him. I know everyone has their opinions on him. It was either he ran the ball with it, like made plays with his feet, or he was throwing and having to force things. You have to be able to establish a real running game. And, and you know, I think outside of maybe uh, Alabama A and M, but. Uh, I've been talking to an inside source at that program on Twitter. They've been DMing me updates. There's gonna be there's gonna be something coming down the pipeline very soon in terms of a running back. And I think if you listen to the Condell Maynard interview, um, that was I, I forgot what news channel it was, but he kind of mentioned that it, there's something coming down the pipeline that's really gonna change the game of their Alabama A and M. But this brings us to the question, man. They got another highest rate of recruit in Jackson State history. You've got everything set up. Like Jackson State, like this is your team. You've got some of the best TBs in the country, especially with Nugget. You've got some of the you got that wide receiver talent. I mean, y'all all commented and ripped me apart for saying Josh Lanier wasn't Randy Moss. So it better hope he plays. Because right now, I think Shane Hooks, Corbin, and maybe even this kid are better than Josh Lanier. We'll see the field before him. But We'll see. And, you know, I, we have all this set up. The offensive line, y'all tell me he's rebuilt. You tell me the D-line's ready. Linebackers and linebackers are ready. They got that transfer out of Florida last week, too. And I got a little bit of news coming on him later. But this begs the question, guys, and I want y'all to comment below what y'all think. Is this a championship or bust season for Jackson State? And so we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but I want to kind of re- open it up and so what i want to define it first all good conversations you got to define the topic you got to you got to define terms all that kind of stuff what i mean by championship or bust is not that if jackson state doesn't win it this year they're never going to win it or that dion's tenure has been subpar that dion should be fired or let go none of that all i'm saying is if they don't win the swag does that hurt their grade? And do you consider, can you even think of consider, considering the season a success if they don't win the SWAC? And, you know, I've been kind of going back and forth on this with myself as I've been prepping for this episode. And really and truly, guys, the only answer I could come up with is yes. This is championship or bust. And now there's a few reasons why it is. And so, one, let me start out with, it's because Dion has already said it's championship or bust. You can't have all this promotion about see me in the fall. You can't, the fall this come, you cannot be talking all about the fall, fall, fall 
and then not deliver in the fall. You have to del- eventually listen. I mean, I get it. This team's great. So many things are going well for this team. And you got all these recruits and all the hype and all the media, all the NIL stuff. Every- everything is going right for Jackson State right now. When I look at their schedule as I, as I pull it up, I mean, you're going to have to win uh, this year. Because if you don't, what is the message going to be? And, you know, I think that their recruiting class next year should be even better than this year, to be honest, especially if they win. When I look, the Florida A&M game is huge. That is an in-division game, and the loser pretty much sets themselves way back in terms of even making it to a SWAC championship because you're already a game behind Jackson State, which means you're going to have to find a way to, you know, make up that game you lost. And you're also got to deal with now, okay, so what happens if when I go see Alabama a and That becomes a must-win game um, in division. And then you look at Tennessee State. Do I think Jackson State could beat Tennessee State? Yes, but it's in Memphis, Tennessee, and I, I think that team's reloading. You're going to have such hype around that game just being the Eddie George and all of them are there, and they have they have a lot of QB transfers in there. I mean, I don't really know what Tennessee State is going to look like. I think Jackson State wins. It's going to be a big game. Then you got that game at ULM, the, and I've already told y'all what I think about that game. Jackson State should be a favorite. They should win that game. Let's move on, and they're better than Delta State, so let's not waste our time. The schedule lays out perfectly for them, though, because they do get a bye week before traveling to Huntsville to face Alabama a and that's huge because Alabama A&M has FAMU and Jackson State back to back. So fam, so Alabama A&M is going to have to be real focused during those two weeks, but that bye week could really help them. That is a key game. And as y'all know, I mean, everyone, Florida A&M, Jackson State, game of the year for everybody. But this is a very big game. I would rank it one of the top five games in preseason, regardless of what you say. And you can comment, argue with me, whatever you want. Then you got Alabama State who smacked you last year. I mean, I think Urza Gray is still running for touchdowns on your defense. You've got to find a way to beat them. Bethune, I think you're probably better than. I th- I'm going to give you the win over Bethune. Then you got Mississippi Valley. Everyone's been considering them a trap game. On the road, you know, you go through a tough stretch of A&M, Alabama State, Bethune. You're going to have to focus there and avoid that being a trap game. Texas Southern, I think they're better than. Southern and Alcorn, though, is where it's going to get real tricky. And that's why that FAMU game is so big, because if you're 0-1 coming out of that game, you've got Alabama A&M on the road. You've got Southern on the road. you got Alcorn to end the season. Those are all those are all huge games. Yes, they're not, you know, Alcorn's not a division game, but it's a conference game. So it counts for your conference record. And so that is huge. And so – they can't afford a loss early, and they're gonna. They're got tough games all throughout. The season. They got the tough season opener. They got the tough middle game at Alabama A and M. Then they got a tough closing stretch with Southern and Alcorn. Jack, listen, Jackson State. I don't think I, I think has the most talent on paper for a team in the SWAC. But as everyone's been saying, and as I've kept it very consistent, say what you want. If you disagree, agree with me. I've kept it consistent on this podcast. Until you do it on the field, it's all talk. It's all speculation. Alcorns went out there and won titles. Alabama A&M has went out there and won titles. You have to go on the field and prove that you can win on the field because, listen, guys, let me, let me just be honest with y'all. There's a lot of there's a lot of teams in the country that recruit a lot of talent. They get a lot of five stars, get a lot of four stars, and recruit at a high level. They don't have much to show for it. And unless you're unless Jackson State goes out there, wins the swag, and goes out there and wins the Celebration Bowl, I, I don't think you could give this season above a C, maybe a B minus. And it's because of the hype, and I get it. And I think Dion knows that it comes with with the territory of being this this quote unquote powerhouse program and recruiting all this talent, getting all this hype, getting all this attention. He understands that with the attention comes the expectations, and it's very weird to me that you know Jackson State has more expectations than the defending champions in Alabama A and M, and then. 
still the defending champions in Alcorn because they didn't get a chance to defend their title. I think the pressure is so high on, on Jackson State right now that if you don't win – I, I, th I think you've got to look at it as, man, what could have this? What could what could have this season been? Because there's the teams like I don't the the thing that bothers me about the and the some of the takes I've seen about the SWAC this year is that Jackson State's just going to cakewalk everybody. Man, let let, let me let me be honest with y'all. I, I don't I don't think it's ever going to be a cakewalk through the SWAC, especially with what some of these teams have coming in the future. Just because a kill leaves doesn't mean Alabama a and going anywhere. They got Quincy coming right after. Southern is a very experienced team this year, and they got some recruits coming up after them. Fam U's building something. I mean, Alcorn is going to be Alcorn because they've been consistently good for multiple years. I don't think Jackson State is just going to cakewalk and just smack everybody. I think there's going to be some dogfights, and – the thing that worries me is that Jackson State failed to win close games last year at times. Yes, they, they won like one, but other than that, they were cakewalking people, and then once they got a little tough, they kind of folded under the pressure last year. And I don't know I – don't, I don't, I'm not saying that was going to happen this year. I'm just saying until they can show me they can win close games and they can compete with the best of the best in the SWAC, we might just have to we might just, uh, we might just have to pump the brakes on expectations. But based on the hype, Based on the talk and based on the expectations Dion has placed on his program, I, I really do think this is championship bus for Jackson State. Y'all can disagree. I want y'all to comment below. Listen, I love y'all commenting on this. And you know, let's just go ahead and announce re-announce it. Saturday, 6 p.m. Central. I'm gonna I'm gonna make the premiere thing, whatever, on uh YouTube so y'all can uh turn y'all's post notifications on. <clears throat> we have a live stream right here on YouTube with me. Blue Bloods live, man. We are going to come on here, answer all y'all's questions. We'll keep it debate a little bit. Make sure to come here if y'all disagree with me on this and come tell me why I'm wrong. I love I love debating with y'all. I love talking with y'all. I love the interaction. But guys, comment below what y'all think about this commit. Comment below if y'all think this is championship or bust for Jackson State. And man, just subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to tune in Thursday for our interview with Mark Evans the second offensive lineman of Arkansas Pine Bluff. And we got so many interviews coming down the pipeline, man. So make sure to subscribe. Turn on your post notifications because y'all aren't going to want to miss it. Live stream Saturday, 6 p.m. Central, right here on the Blue Bloods YouTube. But for myself, guys, the two-minute drill and the Blue Bloods, I'm out for right now.